music. Yeah. All right, we're live. We're live right now. You ready hello. to go? Hello, everybody. Welcome to T Dot Real Talk with Jordan. And today's artist profile is G Vine, one and only producer extraordinaire, chef, also artist. You know him from his credits off of the LA complex where his song was featured sex and weed and you also know some of his other artists which might have been featured on the jersey shore such as yoza malade whose song ride on was featured on the jersey shore's last season the fifth season so let's get this interview started and uh let's see how this goes so at the top of things what did you think of uh, the latest thing with the whole Occupy Toronto movement that was all over the place? Because... Um, <coughs> what did I think I, about it? Yeah. In general, just lightly. I mean, the times are changing, that's definitely. You can feel it. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff. You know, people are now able to to organize himself and uh, how would I say it? And, uh, you know, lash out against the government. I mean, lash out in big ways, in too. Big ways, like numbers, turning up big crowds, you know what I mean? Disturbing the peace. That's what that's what they're doing, right? But the is, is this the only way you think they can get their views across? It seems like it is because big shots don't really listen to little people. <coughs> I know, but I mean that's one way. That's one. That's one way. There's many ways, but that's one way, and that's how uh, the youth of today tend to take it. You know, I mean, we see it all over the world. You see it in Saudi Arabia. You see it in uh, Syria right Syria. now. Syria homes. Yeah. Where they are brutally, brutally slaughtering their own people. Oh yeah. Their own people, and you would think that your soldiers and your Military is there to protect you, and when they show up with machine guns and shoot you down, it's kind of a mean hello, goodbye type of a situation. Do so you, over time, you think more citizens should become involved in this type of protesting, or do you think the citizens would be afraid to voice their opinions due to the repercussions of it? No, I mean, people are not afraid to voice their opinion. Not in today's time. No, nah, not with Twitter and, and, no. and Facebook and all of social media. I mean, media. people have realized that, you know, the governments are not what they say they are. You know, no, they are not. I mean, and uh, governments are run by corporations. You know, and, you know they'll still like that. And people have had enough. And they just corporations want a are people now, though. Corporations are people in the United States of America. Even though we're in Canada, we're broadcasting from Canada. The United States, mm -hmm. a corporation is a person and cash equals the right to free speech and when you have that kind of a system nobody no one of us take me or you or or anybody for example <coughs> is never going to have as much money as GE or Exxon Mobil that that's that's just they're billion you, dollar you, you, gas companies and energy companies you can get up there unless you're, you're willing to, you know, sell your heart and your mind and your soul. And your morals. And your morals. <laughs> you can get as high as you want to go. Because everything is a pyramid, right? We all know that, you know what I mean? All right, uh, let's move on to uh, some of the things that you personally have done in your life. Uh, we know that you've done some work with Shaq Claire and... Uh, He's a big Toronto <coughs> artist. Mm -hmm. He was huge, huge. He reached a huge status in the 90s and the early 2000s. And he's trying to make a comeback right now. What do you think about his success in the business? I mean, he's got great respect. He's, he's one man that I, he, he's by far country. one of my greatest. I don't know about like internationally, you know, but for sure in Canada he's got a lot of respect. 
so you know from that you know he did put his work in when he first came out um, oh yes he did he did uh, do some damage but you know times are changing people yes. want to hear uh, new stuff new records so and that's what you are all about is doing new records and, new uh, records change the time is there uh, any, any whispers of a little <clears throat> bit of cosmic union with shock Lair? Can you rephrase that again? Is there any rumors that we rumors that we can uh, rumors? Well, that we can I, I start or expel. I got one thing to say: that Shockler is back, whether you like it or not. For all you motherfucking haters out there, the Chisnaga is back to reclaim the title for Toronto. <laughs> Big up, Drake. You know we got your back. You shot me out a couple years ago before you got big, but. You're gonna hear some crazy stuff. Yeah, she's not this bad, man. I mean, people love and respect Sean Clare, so. What do you think about Drake's success? It's amazing. It isn't a phenomenal offer, but mixtape, some one man, let alone just. Oh, Drake is a hard worker, man. I remember meeting him in 2008 at a Sean Clare video shoot, and um, I had a chance to interview him for at least 10 minutes. And Little did I know that he was going to grow up to be such a successful artist. And uh, I love that, you know what I mean? He's a hard worker, he deserves it. And, uh, Definitely. You know, I wish him all the best, man. You know, G Van, Drake. Yeah, you'll see that interview soon. I haven't released it yet, but very soon you'll see it. For those who are unfamiliar with him, uh, can you give a history of? Artist that goes by the name Oli, O L I. <clears throat> we need to know from interviews that we have on file that you two managed to link up in, uh, I believe it was 06. No, I think it was earlier than that. Oh, so, okay, so it was earlier than 06. I'm thinking, um, but uh, it's been 2004, 2005. It, we can say it's been fate ever since with you two. You've been non-stop production monsters. Enough content to fill a record store just between the two of them both. Believe me, I've seen the audio files. I, I can vouch for it. <laughs> uh, so uh, let me get some. What sets Oli apart from uh, other artists in today's industry? What sets him apart? Yeah. Well, number one, his voice. He's, the kid has got an amazing voice that that compels, that, that, that reach over mountains. And, you know, you'll never think such a little skinny white kid has <laughs> a voice like that, right? So you never know. First, that's the first thing you hear, man. When you hear that, when you hear that voice. It's branded, like, you know. It, it, I mean, you just know. And the scary it's thing old. is, is not a lot of people know. He's had this this style, this voice, since he was like 12, 13 years old when he used to freestyle about me back when we used to hang out and yeah. smoke trees in Jenny O'Brien's basement. Shout out to Jenny O'Brien. You might not be watching, but you will be soon. <laughs> but uh, now, as of plans, what are plans for Oldie's career in 2012. <clears throat> what do you got planned for him? Well, we got a crazy uh, album, mixtape album coming out. I think uh, everybody knows they can get Demon Swag right now on, on uh, Bandcamp.com. You can check it out on YouTube. Demon Swag, Oldie Demon Swag, PHS. YouTube it, because if you YouTube it, <coughs> all the tracks, all the tracks are on YouTube. One track is missing on the Bandcamp download, which is Unforsaken and events that shall not be mentioned right now. But, uh, what, what can we go on? Uh, how long have uh, you personally been in the industry, and then how long has Oldie been in the industry now? In the industry. In the industry. Well, Music industry. Because you're, you're in a lot of industries. Well, well music, that. I mean, I was born with it, man. Like, you know, so 
I feel like you know, I was born in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot you know of know I mean? a lot I of us feel like that when when we're surrounded by it, and I think it, it's a good thing that, to have that yeah. positive outlook on how the industry is on yeah. what it is, and you can only take it for what it is. Mm. There's no point in making it look pretty and nice because it's just, the industry is a bitch. And you gotta put in dues, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm starting my dues by helping promote you guys socially through Twitter, Facebook, and all of the other social media sites. Even Google Plus, I hate to say it. <laughs> but, uh, alright, so let's get on with the show. Out of the many albums he's made, uh, What's your favorite Oli song, first off, and why? And then his favorite album that you have I think that the track that I love the most is uh, Turn It Up. Turn It Up? Turn It Up. My name is Oli, y'all don't know me. But after this shit, then you'll know me. That is I, I think one. that one is it's just friends, you know what I mean? I love uh, War of the Demon Swag. Um, check out Demon is. Swag. Pick up the CC co-producer TQ, yeah PHS. Um, war, I like War. I like Sedated. Sedated is it? Sedated is dope. Um, and uh, but you know how I am, you know. I make a record and I'm on to the next. You know, <laughs> we move so fast. We're cosmic, man. You know, we're always thinking of great ideas and doing different things, right? So. I'm looking out for uh, holy shit. Oh yeah, man. I, I'm all. Uh, this is holy shit. This is honestly, oh, holy shit. Holy shit. 2012 is gonna be the Grammys like, oh, yeah. coming this year. So uh, dope ass track. Look up for Mag T. I got a, a, a little question here for you from uh, a fan. 16 year old boy and a 40 year old man download Oli's album in two different walks of life. What? Can they take away as a message from their song? That's a good question. I mean, heart and soul, passion. Yeah, yeah. that's a good question. These fans come up with great questions. <laughs> heart and soul. I mean, when you hear them spitting those rhymes, you know it's coming from the heart. The passion. And, uh, to be great at anything that you do, you've got to have passion. So that's what I feel like they're taking away. Or learn. In terms of being a role model, is there any special message that you try to promote in young minds today? Anything? Oh well, yeah, man. I mean, number one thing is to be positive. Always to stay positive. Positive and be who you are, because we got a lot of young kids out there running around and um, acting like a fool and not being themselves. So, I mean, you gotta be who you are, straight up. You know? Positive and be who you are. All right. So, uh, do you feel that gangster rap is responsible for many of these uh, problems in the at-risk community? And I use at-risk in quotations there because some at-risk is a wide variety. Before it used to be just the black community, but it's not the black community anymore. It's everywhere. It's the black community, the Latino community, the white community in, in, in the South are just as violent, just as violent, the teens. But it's music, crazy. you got to understand that, you know, like for me, like when when I make music, it's, it's for a positive reason. Yeah. So and there's nothing <coughs> negative that comes out so, of some of the artists. It's, it's maybe it's their influence, like how they were raised or the area that they live in, and that's all they know. And do you think you know so? What I mean? Do you think some so, of the bigger artists promote a, 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 an image that isn't easy, even necessarily their image? They just well, know that image sells, so they just go. Sure, many artists do that. I'm not going to name any. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't expect you to name names. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> we don't want any artist does, you know. <laughs> does that, you know, do that. Many artists do that, yeah. for sure. 
it's 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 sad when in today's day and age with the access to information that people take away such little little things like somebody talking about shooting somebody in a song instead of taking away the lyrics of that song and putting just the beat on the spot instead of putting the lyrics on the spot put the beat on the pedestal you know what I'm saying like instead of the lyrics being what it's about it being about the violence the gangsterism the money the bitches the hoes all that nonsense that people rap about and whatnot <laughs> and, and just have it for the music the beat just have the love for the music like there's a uh, Kid Cudi, he does that, he, he's just about, if, if somebody tells him, he oh, they don't like the way that sounds, well, they can go fuck themselves. He's going to use that sound even more just because they don't like it. I mean, nowadays with the internet and everything, it's freedom of creation. Everybody's just doing what's cool, what's hip, how they can get hits, you know, just using whatever they can use to, to be noticed. And at the end of the day, if you're straight up being positive and being true, then your work will last forever. If you're just in for the quick haul, the quick dollar, then you yeah. you know, so. People like that and that this business do not last, and they, and they never have lasted. And it's, it's sad to see somebody like Oli who literally bleeds this. I've seen this man bleed hip hop, yeah, he and, and, and he is a white boy from Toronto who lives in the suburbs. <laughs> but you, 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 when you bleed that much of something, mm -hmm. you eventually become what that something is. And there's a, no, yeah, because, because you, you put the time covered. and everything into it. He's, he's he's literally been doing it for a decade. Mm -hmm. but now that I think about it, it's been about a decade. Of him rap, rapping, rhyming, and continuing on his path. What uh, what are the some of your other artists that you want to talk about tonight? Because we're going to be profiling a whole bunch of artists out of THS until the podcast um, takes off. Well, first I want to give a shout out to the crew. <coughs> THS crew. Shout out to Clifford Clark. AKA CC, Scar Guy, number one producer in the world, G Lennon and CC. Together we make the craziest shit with the cosmic sound. And that's without a doubt. Then it goes sure. to TQ. TQ is the craziest engineer. His fingers takes the music to a different level. And Sheldon, Sheldon is our video editor. There's all the video editing, all the media stuff. We got Jordan here. He does all the social media marketing, Twitter. Right? I do my and uh, I try. Shout out to Mag T. Shout out to my number one artist, Oli O L I. You know, every day. Look out for Holy Shit 2012. New mixtape album. It's gonna be dope. TQ's mixing it right now. This is actually something that I want to get touch on with holy shit. Holy shit. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me when, since they can now get Sex and Weed on iTunes, download that, when will they be able to get an Oli album on iTunes? People want to know. <coughs> I would say for sure, by, by June 21st. So you know, just in time for, for, for our, the high school kids, college kids. I know college kids finish earlier than that. Yeah. But high school kids, way. they'll be able to get holy shit. And I know they're going to love holy shit. Definitely. Uh, when Sex and Weed, you can get it on iTunes. <laughs> Giovanni Sex and Weed. That was also featured on Much Music's The LA, the LA Complex. Complex. Yeah. And this was a big, big, big deal for you. Because to get on much music, it's just been a pain in the ass for the studio. I know 
getting the videos up over there isn't the easiest thing in the world. The thing is, you know, you gotta have different uh, ammunition. You go to war, yeah. you can't just bring grenades. You gotta have, you gotta you have gun. an arsenal with you. you, arsenal. you gotta, so you could go into the back, you go through the front, or you throw up the rope, you can go in anywhere. And that's the key, yeah. right? You gotta arm yourself so that uh, when you get shot down from one end, you go through and through the next. So did you feel that uh, this was uh, a defining point in your career? One of the many? For uh, having a song on much music? Well, get, uh, not, not much music, but that that's a, an American-made TV show, so getting well, even into the American music market through that. I mean, it's something that we've always dreamed of, like all of us. Oh, God. We've always dreamed of it, so it's... I mean, it's a big deal to all of us, but, you know, the amount of hours and years that we've put in, like... You can't get a swole head. No, man, because we got so much other stuff to do, so that's just one thing. Let's yeah. move to the next. You know, you just got to build a resume and show the people uh, what we got. So, uh, the next little thing here is that I was uh, watching one of my favorite shows on MTV, Jersey Shore. Shout out to all the Jersey Shore kids out there. Jersey Shore! <laughs> they're, they're coming out with their sixth season soon. That's a good thing. <coughs> Maybe we'll get a next track featured on that. But, uh, I'm sitting there. And all of a sudden I hear one of my favorite reggae slash, I don't know, how would you define Yoza's style? Yoza, Yoza. That's Big how it's pronounced, Yoza? I've been pronouncing it wrong. Melodic Yoza. I, I, I just call him Melodic, that's Yoza. why. Yoza. <laughs> Yoza, what up? Holla at your boy. Oh yeah, that dude. It's got so much energy, man. That yowza, melodic yowza. Big up yourself. Look out for Mary Jane coming this summer. Yes, that's his next yowza, big track. Mary, is Mary Jane. Jane. And we're working on a new single. Too. I'm not. I can't remember the name of that one, but look out for yowza. That that dude has got so much energy, man. And you know when he's in the studio, he can't be sleeping. No, no. You know, he he can't keeps be. you, keeps you hype. He <laughs> keeps you up. Keeps you moving. So shout out to Yowza. He's know, always he, doing work. Yeah, I, oh yeah. I, I, he always hits up my, t my my Facebook feed at least ten times a day with his street team. Yeah, his yeah. street team is always hitting up the Facebook. So uh, how'd you feel when his uh, track was featured on Jersey Shore? I felt real good. You know, I think he needed that to uh, boost his confidence. That's and, a big uh, that, that <clears throat> that's a big thing. Get, getting anything featured on MTV period is. Uh, Amazing, but MT that was MTV America, so that was even huger than uh, what a lot of us think it, it, it is. It's a, it's a real big honor, even though the show is <laughs> the greatest honor to the Italian people because I'm Italian, but we won't go there. <laughs> so, uh, what can you tell me about Yowza? And uh, potentially any plans for him in the near future? Just with Mary Well, Jane? he's um, working on an album right now. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, um, hmm, can't remember the name right now. But he's about to drop his um, his first album. And uh, look up for it, Melodic Yowza. So. Uh, is there any uh, female artists here at PHS that we can touch on? Yeah, we're working with a young, two young ladies at the moment. There's more. There's, a, there's one who's being blown up in her, in a little bit of a way. I know you guys did a little bit of work with Fahari. Fahari, yeah. It's managed by Sugar Eye Entertainment. Yeah, we did um, Dance the Night Away for Ferrari. Me and um, CC produced that. Uh, that did well on the internet, mm -hmm. on, on the hits and stuff. She's now moved on and doing other stuff with other producers, but she comes back here, gets her mixing done and, you know, little edits here and there. You know, what it can be, TQ's mixing. Shout out to Ferrari. That's for sure, man. All right. Fire Lion. 
So let's talk about these two uh, young female artists yeah, we got. We have Dia. Dia. Lucianto. She Dia. is a What's cutie. up, Dia? We just finished her EP. You know, it was consists of uh, five tracks. Um, yeah, she just la- launched her website today, too, I believe, on her Facebook. So check out her Facebook for all mm-hmm. her fans. We got Mandy Bow. We're working with her. She's a pop artist and actress. <laughs> um, but that's it. Shout out to, to La Santa. La Santa is in university right now in Windsor. When you get back, La Santa will be on the same music page as we always do. Shout out to Lady Red, First Lady of PHS, wherever you are or whenever you see this. Um, who else got you? Shout out to Cami Kaz. Yeah, man. There's so many shout outs. We can go on all day doing shout outs. But we can't get oh. off topic. <laughs> uh, so, if I were to take your iPhone, iPod, and go through your list, which would be the most played song right now? On my iPod? Yeah. Uh, Oli's mm. new stuff? <laughs> no, I don't. Not, not only shit. I don't have any tracks on the iPod right now. Of, of Oli. Um, I do uh, I do have that Dia track, Not For Always. You can check that out on iTunes. Dia. D-I-I-A. Not For Always. Reggae track. Produced by G-Man and CC. You know, we do all different style of music. Um, but my go-to track, Always Sex and Weed. Always. I mean, I can never get tired of that song. Matter of fact, I've had that song sitting in the hard drive for a while, and Tiki said to me one day, let's finish it, let's put it up, and see what happened. So, Sex and Weed will be my go-to song. And uh, I heard that uh, you want to do a dubstep mix to that song. Absolutely. Yeah? I got Jesse Effects working on that. Yeah. Shout out to Jesse. That would be sick. Yeah. Okay, even if somebody like God bless, like Skrillex grabs that track and just throws it together somehow. Well, hey, if you can get a hold of any one of those guys, that I'll is. give you the acapella and the tempo. You can shoot it to them or let them know. Let them yeah. listen to it if they yeah. like it. It's just... Because uh, you never know, right? Yeah. That's they get exactly. a hold of it, they put something on it, they, and it, it, it just gets bigger and bigger. So, uh... So that would be a good, good thing to do. Now we're going to get around to the founding of PHS. And that question starts with, uh, <coughs> how did you first start PHS? Um, PHS. Well, I first met um, TQ through a friend that I used to work with at the same tower by the name of Mira. And we started a company by the name of Harbor Sharks. And pretty much Harvey Shocks was, you know, computer um, accessories. You know, hard drive, CDs, DVDs. Back when those things were like popular. Exactly. And, you know, my partner Mira knows that I love music and, you know, I'm always doing music whenever I can. Not as consistent as I'm doing it now. But, um,. He said to me one day, let me introduce you to a friend of mine. Drove me up to Scarborough, introduced me to TQ. Fell in love with the guy, he was an amazing guy. We actually stayed at his house, did the song, came back the next day, did the next song. Loved his vibe so much. I invited him to my house, he came over to my house. He saw my setup, he ripped it apart and set it up how he felt that it should be set up. Because obviously he's an engineer. The man is amazing, TQ is amazing. So then, when he did that, I was like, yeah, man, I think this guy's cool. I think we can do some great things together. Yeah. And um, went back to his house, did a few more songs, and I said to him, hey, listen, let's, let's start a studio. You know what I mean? And um, I think the next year I met um, Alton. Alton um, is a bass player, Alton Sutherland. And then uh, I met him at um, La McQuaid, actually. We walked into La McQuaid and was looking at some equipment. Also, shout out to Paolo, district manager at La McQuaid. Hook us up. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, me and Alton uh, 
me and TQ walked into a Lama Quay, heard some guy playing the bass. Of course, you know it was Alton. Introduced myself, I'm like, hey, how you doing? We just started a studio down the street. Come down, check it out. So he came down, check it out. He really loved it so much. Then he's like, hey, I know some other players. Then Alton brought over CC Clifford Clark. And um, ever since, it's been me, TQ, and, and Clifford. And um, that's it. That's the three core right there. <laughs> you know, we, we stuck together, made music together every day, took care of each other, you know what I mean, for 10 years, and we're still together. And um, I hope we're, we'll be together for the rest of our life. You Pick know, up a few stragglers along the way. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you know? What is uh, the main vision of PHS? What is PHS all about? PHS stands for Paradox Harbor Shop. You know, in Jamaica, we got a family, familiar term. In Jamaica, we got a familiar term by the name of harbor sharks. And a harbor shark is a person who's hungry. Hungry for success, passionate. It's just a term <coughs> that we use harbor shark when somebody's passionate for something. And then when I met TQ, his name for his uh, sound was, was uh, Paradox. So that's how we put it together, and we got Paradox Harbor Sharks. And uh, pretty much, we're just people that, that love what we do, and passionate, and stay true, and believe what we do is the best, and uh, that's how we, we uh, continue to do it. Uh, how, uh, how do you feel you guys have evolved over the past couple of years? Oh, so much, man. You know, when I first got into this, you know, in the, in the first year or two, you, I felt like I, I know everything about music. And uh, the more you get deeper, you get into it. The more you realize you don't. The re more you realize you don't. <laughs> and, uh, I found that out uh, real quick. <laughs> Somebody me. It might be an oldie trying to call because I know he wanted to call in to the show because he wanted to christen the first. We have a number of viewers. We did have one, but a lot of the people will end up going to and watching the recording of this because it's so late. You still can record it. You still can it's watch it. It goes exactly into yeah. an archive where people can watch it. I'm not going to ever take it down, but what I will do is I'm going to dub the video and also put it up on Vimeo. So those with Apple TV, shout out to Apple TV, hook me up, can access it on Vimeo. And uh, G Vine is a revolution. Keep it cosmic. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Keep it cosmic. Keep it going, keep it moving, keep it flat, flow, right, sail it. Uh, now we're going to be touching on a touchy subject. And uh, I feel that uh, this is a, a troubling incident. So I'm sure you've already heard the big news story on uh, Trevon Martin. And for those of you who don't, he was a 17-year-old African-American boy who was shot dead by a neighborhood watch person who pursued him. From the coverage in the media so far, what are your thoughts and opinions of this case, if any? I think they're blowing it out of proportion. The media gotten all of it, spreading the propaganda, all of that kind of stuff. I think there's going to gonna get be a, a, people a race. I don't think about it. no race war, man. Like, you know, if you believe that, then it will be. I don't believe in no race war. We're all one race. We're all it's just color, man. Now, what is color? Come on. Color is melatonin, that's it. Color is beautiful. I don't believe in no race war and race this and race that. If you don't believe in something, then you're free from it. Once you buy into it and you believe into it, then you become attached to it, then you become convulged into it. Like, fuck that, man. Yeah, I never grew up um, with my parents saying, um, <clears throat> you know, that white guy, you know, that black guy, that Indian. Guy. No, man, no. it was never like that. So, you know, all that stuff is taught. 
You know what I mean? I never, my parents never taught me that. To not like somebody because of their color. That's, that's just crap to me. I don't like, think that, parents that thing should that teach their kids to hate animals, <coughs> let alone just one specific of them. I believe in love, man. You know, we're all one race. I don't oh, care what man. color you are, man. You know, you cut me, we bleed. We die, we go into the earth. That's it. You know, now we ain't going nowhere. What we should do is come together like one big family and have a party. Can you and imagine how much things that we can learn from each other if oh, we didn't God, have this? Yeah. This Maybe white people thing in our mind. actually be able to dance better. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the problem, you know what I mean? We all come from different places in the world. Oh, yeah. We all eat different food and raise differently. But it's good when you can learn about different culture because it, 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 it makes you better, you know, because it's just, that's just how it is, man. We got we to gotta grow and become better human beings, you know what I mean? And forget about this color thing because... It's not taking us anywhere, but down. All right, I like uh, to fly, man. One more kind of a politically thing. Uh, to, today, Rob Ford announced a cleanup Toronto bill, <coughs> stating that he hopes to get rid of all graffiti in Toronto. Do you feel that this is an important issue that needs to be taken care of <coughs> in TDOT, or is it just something that will suppress artists and irrelevant evil? Irrelevant to other important issues like the massive debt that Toronto has. Well, I, first of all, I think the graffiti is there as a uh, uh, sentimental. It's been there for years. There, there's there a, a, there's a difference time. between graffiti and tagging, is there not? Yeah. First of all, there the, the tagging is a is a gang t territorial thing. Yeah. I mean, graffiti is when somebody spends your time to design the art. Yes. Yeah, I'm into that stuff. But if a gang is going to 